Hi, this is Margaret Maloney, and welcome to the Death Dhamma Podcast. Together, we will consider life, death, and impermanence. Because in between birth and death, we lose things, not just our glasses and our keys. We lose identities, relationships, ideas, and more. But what we can gain right now is facing this together, and we will gain freedom, peace, and progress on our path. Hello, my friends. I sure hope you listened to the last episode where I had the discussion with Sophie Jacobs. She was really just such a joy to speak to, and so much we can learn from her in terms of how our intuition and our working with impermanence and meditation and all of those things can merge to really help us in our lives. She was pushed by the COVID quarantine. It canceled her graduation, all the celebrations, all the time with friends and family. However, despite that, the perfect job surfaced for her when a friend sent her a text and asked her to come join the startup and the startup that her friend was part of. And that was a dream job. That was a dream job. But that dream job came with some toxicity and it introduced her into that like we call that toxic hustle culture where she experienced definite lack of sensitivity from her colleagues because her house burned to the ground in the Cal- in the fires in northern california a couple of years ago and everyone expected her to be fully productive as if nothing had happened within a few days of the fires. And I get the sense that no one even really checked on her and asked her how she was doing. They just asked her questions about work. And that was, as you can imagine, very off-putting. And it reminded her of the importance of all these things happening, reminded her of the importance of her intuition, trusting her own inner knowing, and also, you know, a central question what matters most and this has led her to wonder how best to be in alignment with her true self and this is something we could all ask ourselves what matters most and am i living in a way that is in alignment with my true self and if you want to be practicing and dedicated to your buddhist practice Are you living in a way that's supporting your ability to be in alignment with your practice? Are you spending time with people who support your endeavors? Are you spending time with people who understand that your practice is important to you? What about people who are equally committed to achieving their own liberation from suffering? Well, early in our discussion, I share that, you know, because she and I are speaking together on camera. I know you're listening to a podcast right now, but when I do this, usually the person that I'm speaking with, we're on camera so we can see each other. It's nice and it makes for a better discussion. So I see Sophie is smiling and you know what? I also believe like she glows from within. So here she's faced these difficult situations. She's been riding the waves of impermanence and it all seems to have served her well. And she discusses her adventures calmly and matter of factly. There's no sign of self-pity. You know, there's no poor me, all these things happened to me within two years. She seems to really come from a place of meeting impermanence and leveraging it to help herself really consider what is most important and how can she work to be in alignment with what is most important. And my wish for all of us is that we can meet impermanence in our lives on a regular basis and face it calmly with equanimity, right? Face it with equanimity and understand, oh, this has changed. Now I'm going to do this. In fact, she discusses the gift of seeking her next job because it's probably no surprise that when she lost her house and her colleagues just expected her to you know, put her nose to the grindstone and act as if she hadn't lost her house, that really helped her see that that wasn't the right place for her to be. And so she left, but you know, she was going to go back to work. So, you know, she's seeking her next job and she got a rejection, right? She went through an interviewing process and I think that it was, seemed to be going well and she got a rejection and that is not fun for most of us. 
I've been rejected for jobs many times, and I'm sure there are things that I will still be rejected for. And I try to take it matter of factly and understand that that means it wasn't the right situation, but it's still not always fun, right? So this rejection, it helped her to pay attention to something else that was calling to her. And that was to go and stay in a monastery, to leave the outside world and go live with Buddhist nuns and practice and maybe potentially become a nun. Now, the only way that she could be part of the monastery once she found one and she spoke to them was COVID time. So the only way she could do this was to do a two week quarantine in their, we'll say like in their backyard. So she was in a sense on the property, but isolated in her own little area hut, tent, yurt. And she spent two weeks on her own, which meant really that it was a silent meditation. And this introduction, she said this two weeks, she describes it as providing her more learning than her four years in college. Think about that. Now, I'm not encouraging any of you who are listening to this to drop out if you're working on your education because your education does help with some other things. But what it does is it really speaks to the importance of getting to know yourself and what she really got to do in those two weeks of just sitting with herself was, you know, understanding her own mind. And she realized understanding your mind without overthinking things is a process of knowing. And that's a process of knowing she had never been exposed to before in her education. Which makes sense, right? Because our educations turned, tend to be about knowledge and thinking and reciting that knowledge and pulling that knowledge out and, and using it and being productive. And sitting and knowing yourself isn't about any of that. It isn't about any of that. There's not, you're not studying for an exam, unless you want to call enlightenment an exam, right? And this can be true for all of us. This knowing, it's this knowing that can lead us to liberation. It's this knowing that shows us how and where we cling and where we have aversion and why we suffer. If you, you know, when you sit and you meditate and things come up, some things are surprising, some things are not. But when you see what surfaces for you, this is really shining that spotlight on what leads you personally to the path of suffering. What what causes your own clinging and aversion? Now, trusting this knowing is part of what helped her make the difficult decision to leave the monastery. And so she started to go down the path of becoming a nun. She took what we might call in the lay people world, initiate vows. And she decided to come back to the outside world. Now, of course, she faced pressure to stay, right? So for so many of us, taking the time to deepen our practice is going to help us develop clarity of mind, clarity of purpose, and work toward the ultimate goal of liberation from suffering. And along the way, impermanence is going to test you, just like Sophie has been tested by it. And just like she surfs these waves of impermanence and uses them, to really fine tune her life and to really choose the path that feels like it really is in alignment. She didn't leave Buddhism when she left the monastery. She left the holy life. She still is out here in the world as a practicing Buddhist. She just felt that that holy life wasn't exactly right for her right? Things are going to go differently. They went differently for her. They're going to go differently for you. Things are going to be different than what you thought you wanted. And every day is an opportunity to become accepting of what comes, to handle it with equanimity and to answer for yourself. What is it that really matters? And when you find that answer, do more of that. Make decisions that are in alignment with what really matters and point yourself in that direction. You've been listening to the Death Dhamma Podcast with your host, Margaret Maloney. Thank you so much for being here. Come find me on margaretmaloney.com, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com. And until we meet again, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be at ease, and may you be free from suffering. Bye for now.